Well, I did go away and uh, do quite a lot of things in it. I did add the the elevators at the back, and then I added the air intakes on the bottom there. See those three there, and that's really it, guys. The Spitfire is actually a pretty simple kit to put together. Right, so as always, I've uh, mastered top of it off, and I'm going to prime it. So I'm going to be using uh, Mr. So 1000, like I always do. Well, I don't always, I've just started out, if you're new to the channel. And, uh, yeah, it's very thin. It's thinned down with a bit of a humble self-leveling thinner. We're just going to put a bit on and see how it ends up. So, now we're going to do this. Let's start with the tail. See as well, all those cracks are on that lot. And it looks pretty good. Now I wasn't too, too sure on whether to um oh what's the word for it? I wasn't too sure on what was I gonna say? That's it, I wasn't too sure whether I was going to um, rivet some of the things up, I'm not, well I wasn't aware, but um, I think it looks fine as it is guys, because, I don't know. Anyway, I had a look online and many people kind of just left it, and it does still came out beautiful. So that's what I've decided to do, just leave it as it is, let's see what happens. We can have to turn this. Um, yeah, there's a couple of bits that may need sanding, but I can soon get those sorted out in no time. So there we are. You get the picture of what the plan of action is from now on. You'll we'll have to turn the... Um... Hmm. I'm going to have to tie that a bit up again. So, right, there's a thing, there's a hairline on this bit, on the tail. So I just have to clean that up and get rid of it, but there we are. Okay, right, you get the picture. Give it a nice spray, get everything even, nice colour. I'll come back and we'll start painting. Okay, so I've um, got the aircraft on its back pretty much, and we're going to start with the underside. Now, the aircraft I'm going to be doing is, uh, I think it's from 92 Squadron. At the very start of the war, these were in France and obviously Dunkirk. Obviously, hence Dunkirk Spitfire theme for this one. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the actual, uh, well, I have to say, the uh, the primer has actually really brought out those panel lines, and I have to say, guys, it's really done a nice job. I can't complain about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the underside. Now these first ever Spitfires had um, a silver underside, pretty much. These were basically left unpainted. I'm not sure why, but they were. And uh, well, at first the whole lot was covered in silver. And then they basically, at the very start of the war, put over the air. Uh, I'll just show you on here, this thing. They basically left the front cowling and the rest of the fuselage off, but painted the wings in the black and the, black and the white colour over the top. So obviously this, I don't know if you can see there, but obviously number seven, this is how it looks. So I'm just having a quick check. Seven, yeah, that was from yeah Spitfire Mark One A of N three one nine two ninety two Squadron. Apparently, it's been flown by uh, Tuck. I'm not too sure about that because he was in the other one, I think. But anyway, that's that. Um, so it was at Dunkirk, and they did have a silver on the side. So I'm going to use a different paint today. I don't know why they've left the decals up there. Goodness knows why. Um, right, I'm going to put these decals away before I ruin them. Sorry about this. So the paint uh, I'm going to be using is actually... Oh God, what paint is it? It's um, the Arrow MIG paints. Now, I'm not used this. This is the first time I'm going to be using this on the model. I have tested them out and it does flow pretty nice down here. So I got them in a set last uh, Telford. Uh, well, this is 2019, so it'll be 2018. P 
picked up this bare metal set, so you do get uh, polished metal, silver, aluminium, and gun metal. So I'll try the aluminium and see how it goes. So it does spray through nicely, if that's a good sign, I suppose. So I'm just going to do this front cowling piece here, across the front. Just give it a nice even camo. I have to turn this light on, it's going dark now, it's going dusk. There we are. Right, it's so easy for you guys to see because obviously you're on the light side, but for me it's quite difficult. Okay. Just have to take it away for a bit. Okay, it's okay, it's not the best of colours, but... Yeah, I think what I might do, guys, is obviously this is the polished... Well, this not, sorry, it's polished, it's um, the matte aluminium this is, pretty much. And what I would do, I think... Once this is all dried up, I will go ahead and paint it the uh, silver from Revel because I do like the colour of the silver and it does give a nice effect, but I'm not too sure on this one. So, so that's all I can do for now. Just have to tip on its side and do. Lead an edge along there. Okay. Alright, here guys, that is that done. Um, doesn't look too bad, I suppose. It's nice on a, like, a really flat surface like this, but when it gets to a more of a curved curvature like this on the bottom here, then it really does lose its shine, but then again, it is a Spitfire, they are notes for their nice beautiful curves. So there we go. Um, the only problem I've just really noticed is um, I've still got quite a bit of paint left in the bottom, so I'm not sure how I'm going to use that up. So uh, I think what I might do is I might spray a few bits and pieces here and then once I've done the top paint on the top I might just give it a bit of a chipping effect so it doesn't look out in the ordinary but normally I just paint them on the top I don't know yeah I think that's what I might do right so enough waffling me waffling on I'm going to leave this to dry pretty much and then I'm going to come back and we're going to um, well I'm going to give it another coat once it's dry and then when I come back we're going to do the Obviously the white and the black, or the white and the black, which <laughs> you know, it depends which side you're going to do it, but there we are. Um, yeah, there's not very much for me to say really, I'll just crack on and carry on. Okay, it doesn't stick down well, but there we are, the tape is now on, and we're going to be doing the underside now. Right, I'm going to start with the white, uh, this is just Tamiya X2 white. Basically build up layers see how it gets to really and that is all to it now the other side obviously will be in black I'm going to be using uh, just flat back from F1 well sorry XF1 from Tamiya and that'll be it guys really so I'm just basically build up nice even layers And that is all to it, guys. Not really have to say. Um, very unusual scheme I'm doing, but that is obviously it. Okie dokie. Right. I'm going to carry on doing this. I'm going to carry on doing this. I'm just going to put it on anyway. And then let's try and see where we come to. Alright guys, the white is all masked up and I have to say, 
very nice coat on that. Right, so we're going to do the other side now. Uh, we're going to do the um, the black. Now I can't remember if I said or not that I was doing the aluminium underside. Um, like I said beforehand, I was going to do see how it was and then probably do the Revel uh, silver. In the end, I just left it because it just looked fantastic as it does, and it gives a nice, perfect finish. So I might have to put some more pressure, air pressure into this. We'll be out for Michael. There we are. See, it all helps if I did actually put some air pressure on that, but there we are. Okie dokie, right, just one normal coat at the top, except one. So yeah guys, this is a weird scheme, I've never done a black and white underside before, let alone a chrome underside to a Spitfire before, never in my life. So yeah, very interesting, let me know in the comments section if you did the same or not. Give this one quick coat over the top, it's actually going down very well. Going down very well, actually. This is pretty pleased. Rightio. Okay, so we get the picture. What the plan is? And yeah, so pretty much it's made off dry anyway. So we go give a coat over the top. Bit more on the, just on the edges here. There we are. Right here then. So with that done, I don't want to give it too much of a coat over the top. There we are. I say that's pretty much done. Give it a nice coat. I keep saying coat. Sure, we get some nice thick edges along the back here. Turn that off now, actually. There we are. Just no, try not to waste any paint, guys. There's trouble with me. I kind of waste it at the minute, which I don't really want. But there we go. Right, so I'll let that secure for a bit, and I'll give it another recoat, and then we'll look on the. Doing the top uh, side of it, I need to order some um, Mr. Hobby Colour, the Dark Earth. I do like that more than the Tamiya, but there we go. Uh, so I need to get some more paint into the top side, so you'll see it in a bit, obviously. But for me, I don't know when it'll be. I suppose I'd better do some shopping. <laughs> some nice shopping, not grocery shopping, but there we are. Right, I'll see you in a bit, guys. Rightio, now that's dry, let's take this off. So I am actually recording this, don't normally do it, but here we go. So let's see how it's turned out, it should turn out well. Okay. Hmm. Very nicely done. I'm happy with that. Ah, hold on a minute. Hmm. Just a tiny little bit of overspray got in there. Right. Damn. I don't know if you can see, just across this edge here, and uh, right where the radiator is, just there, uh, we've got a bit of vapor spray, but we'll soon sort that out. Pull that back, and last but not least, piece off the front. Wow, very nice. There we are, guys. Wow. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, so a few touch-ups might be needed underneath there, but that looks really beautiful. Now, I really do, it does sound really bad me saying this, I hope that I've got this, um, <laughs> well, I do hope that I've got this actually in line and I've got the right colours side by side, but... There we are. It does look really nice. Very unusual. Aluminium on the side along with a 
black and white wings. Hmm. Very unusual indeed, but oh well. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry. Um, I'm going to redo this white on top because it's really bugging me soon. So I'll do that and we'll move on to the next bit, which will be the top sides. Okay, okay, guys, right. Well, I, the underside is done. Uh, I touched some sides up. I might have to do it again on the side. Took a bit off there. Hmm. Oh well, it looks better than it was. I've masked it all off and we can get painting. Right, so the paintwork. Now, I don't know what it is, but I got the green first, okay? I got some RAF dark green from Tamiya. And then I realised I didn't get the brown. So I thought, well, why don't I spray it green first? Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, I do not know why, but I all the modellers I know and all the photos I've seen, they always spray the brown on first and put a green on the top. I have no idea why, but it's like that. So I waited the next day and I've just mixed myself some brown. Now the colours I used are Mr. Hobby Dark Earth H72 and I mixed it with just a touch of white just to get that dark session a bit off of it. I don't know why, but I love this colour. Beautiful colour for our riff brown and I just dull it back just a touch that's so not fully brown okay so I might have put a bit too thin but we'll see how it goes okay it looks okay it gives it a nice coverage I see Okay, yeah, that is actually not too bad. There's a little bits coming out of it, but that won't matter much. I'll get it all sorted up. I think what I might have to do is I might have to tone down the plastic. But there we tone down the plastic, tone down the. Um, I'll we'll have to tone down the volume of the pressure. But there we are. Speed of which I better turn it on and get some more pressure on. Will be helpful. Okay, guys, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I might have just took it out of shot, sorry. So I'm going to give everything a right uh, dull coat of this brown. And then we can carry on with painting the RAF green. And that is where I'll leave it off. So yeah, it's not a bad colour, but when it gets um, when it gets bolder, I'll show you by what I mean. Okay, here we go. Okay, right. I've given that one coat. Now, as you can see, that gives it a better lighter shade of brown than the actual fully dark earth like you see on many aircraft kits. A bit like this tiny one here. So you can see that is Humbrol 29 that was painted in this one of my old kits I did back in college. Now the brown is totally really dark on that one because I used it straight out of the cup and put onto that one so you can tell the difference straight away. And that guys is really all much to it. So I'm going to go away I'm going to do the rest of this model, obviously do the rest of the painting the brown. I'm then going to work out how I'm going to do the masks. This is actually getting loud. Switch that off. So, as I said, I'll get this all browned off and then I'm going to go away and do the pattern work because remember there was two different types of pattern work for the green. So, yeah, that's going to be quite a coincidence. So, I'll see you in a bit guys. Right here, the other colour, right, the dark green like I mentioned, it's uh, XF81, I'm just going to see, I've only done, masked up this bit first, and that sprays through quite nicely, so we just uh, give it a nice, hmm. Not too bad, maybe I should have used just a touch of thinner first. But, 
it's looking okay. Right, so the long pause. Okay, right. So it looks like a decent colour, will not it? Excuse me. There we go. It doesn't look too bad of a colour. It looks okay. Have a contrast with the brown. Uh, just a bit of overspray there I've just got. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. Right, you get the picture, guys. You can tell what's coming next. I'm going to go away and finish this off and see how we get on. Hello oh guys, right here. We're going to be painting the tyres on the Spitty, yes. Tyres are all welded up here. Well, welded up. They're on the crocodile clip on the end of a stick. And that's going to be that. Right, so what I am going to show you is how I'm going to paint them now. We only need two colours. Uh, I'll start off with rubber black and then NATO black. Okay, this is a very simple tactic. Well, a test to show how to get worn tyres. Is that the right colour? Yes, it is. That slots into there. Okay, so what I'm going to show you, we get some rubber black. Okay, it's had a bit of, just had a touch of thinner, just added into the pot there. May have some red. No, just want a little bit. There we are. Plenty. And find this back so we get a nice coverage. Right, so we've got some black spraying through, just like that. And this is our first technique, what we're going to do. We're going to be just spraying the tyres in the rubber black. That's the first step. Get all the detail. Like so. Same on this one. So basically what we're looking for is that worn effect that we get on aircraft. Tyres do bear a lot of the work when the aircraft is on the ground obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something which I don't normally do, which I'm actually quite terrible at. I would, I would actually swear, but it might be someone else. But let's just say I'm terrible at doing tyres. Okay, so that's the first lot painted. Just give that just a quick spray down. Any moments parts we've missed, just like so. Like that. Okay, so we painted the tyres in the XF85, which is a rubber black, and I'm just going to leave that to dry, and I'll come back and just show you the next technique. Okay, so the dryers are dry, <laughs> tyres are dry. So I'm going to take the NATO black now, just give it a bit of a shake, see if the top pops off. No, it's a good job we've got this handy tool here. There's a bit there, yeah. This handy tool is a lifesaver. Wrong end. Ah, there we are. That tool is an absolute lifesaver, guys. Really is. Let's take that off. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to do a little testing. Spray that. Only drop, not much. Spray through, which is now with these tyres. What we do we literally are just going over the top, twist that around. Just 
Just go over the top, give it that worn effect. Like so. And that is really about it guys. Just to give it that worn effect, I might do a bit, bit of a spray from back here. Just give it that worn effect of rubber tyres. If I want to, I'll get really close. Just on the rim there. And that There's it guys, just to give it that worn look on the tread, once it's dry it should actually show up. But there we are, that is really it. So, uh, also another thing as well, it says Dunlop on the side, so might as well just give that a bit of a, uh, not a, not a moulding spree, but just go over the top and yeah. That is really it guys, I just empty this out onto there. Not spilling any of it, very useful. Okay, and that is really it guys. Uh, we'll get some, probably some pigments on there. We'll see how we get to. Okay, I did say I was going to use some pigments, which I am going to do. The tyres are pretty much done and dusted. Now, I am using uh, Abtai Lung's pigments. Uh, very good, uh, these are the only pigments set I've got. And I recommend them, guys. Absolutely brilliant. So we've got four colours. We've got Vietnam Earth, Dark Earth, Orch Earth, or Africa Earth. I'm going to use the Africa Earth just to represent this. Uh, dark Earth looked too much dark and wouldn't show from the tyres. Africa too look too light, too muddy. So Africa Earth it is. So just change the top off. You can see what I mean. It's uh, quite a light colour using gloves now, you're probably wondering why, probably because I'm using pigments, uh, well I've been using blah blah blah, blah. okay, uh, just what brush do we use, what brush, okay, use you, let's see how we get on, now normally with pigments you can actually uh, put, add a drop of water to them, but I don't think so in this case, uh, add some to the edge here, just like that, just to the edge. Just a bit like that to those edges. There we are, guys. Just give it a bit of a bit of a damp dust off. Just a bit of a dust, just like that. We'll admit this side has had a bit of a treatment than to the others. And that is simply it guys. Make it just a touch mucky. Don't want it too much. If it was Battle of Britain then probably I would have added a bit more of a wash to it but as it's quite early stage on I'm just going to leave as it is. Have you noticed also I've not bothered with the actual tread of the tyre because I've that's where a lot of the movement will go and it hasn't come up in it so that So, there we are, just like that, just get all in and around the tyres, would look best, uh, well look, would look best, bester, 
Well, it better if you did have a type of um, tread on, just to give it that emphasis of wheels. But, yeah, there we are. Right, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to really have it too much. But there we are, guys. There we are. Not a bad issue at all. Make a little, a little bit of weathering just to give it that edge. So there we are. That is that. I'm going to let it dry for a bit. We'll see how we go. Right here, the prop is actually done and glued together. I'm just going to add some straight up black and use a touch of it. Not a great deal. I did actually quite thin this down quite a bit, so I'm only just putting a light coat over the top and just build up layers. I don't know if you can see on camera, I might have took out a shot, sorry. Uh, just over the top there. Get sprayed up. Like so guys, right. Leave that to dry now. And I have to give another coat across the back there. Give it just let that dry pretty much, come back and we'll well, we'll do another paint of it and I'll just do the wing the tips here and that'll be done and dusted. 